Sunday night at 9, don't miss In The Gig with all the action from the harness racing world. Then at 9.45, it's Australia's only dedicated greyhound show, The Catching Pen. Followed by Racing Retro at 10.30 with all the news and views of the week's racing. That's Sunday night on Sky. Program brought to you by City Pacific Finance 136255 and Coolmore Star. She's simply wonderful, isn't she? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Racing Retro. Lovely to be back with you and uh, lovely to be sitting alongside my, my colleagues. Uh, group one racing yesterday at uh, the Valley, as you just saw. We've got a special guest coming in and we'll also be looking at some international racing as well. And we're also seeing how our jockeys in Hong Kong are faring at the moment as the season is underway. But firstly, let's say good morning to Ron Duffersey. What did you do yesterday? You bet, bet on Melbourne? Well, I certainly did. And I thought it was a fantastic program at Mooney Valley and we're going to review it here and thank God you're back Graham this clown well, up here he, he, he read no emails last week and he finished the show about eight minutes early did he? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, oh, well it's <laughs> lovely to be back lovely to be sitting alongside you what did you do that for? we all got paid the same so we <laughs> 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 thought we'd just yeah, have an early yeah. mark you know? more didn't you like that? <laughs> more moves in a tin you idiot Ronnie now we can't <laughs> ever do it again <laughs> you've given up the ghost there Look at Ronnie's hair. Huh? If only we could get the Randwick track looking that <laughs> yeah, lush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been waiting to say it for three weeks, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about uh, Starthy Katsidis? He has won his first ride yeah. in, in Melbourne. Group one winner. How would you feel? you think, how long has this been going on for? I'll just come down here every week. But I'll bet it gets a little harder than that. But she's fantastic, that mare. Mm -hmm. I think she's an absolute... She's a star. You can't beat her when she gets her own way. Yeah, good luck to her too. All right, and let's say hello to the boys in Melbourne too. Alf and Andrew. Hello, gentlemen. I reckon the show went eight minutes shorter because I wasn't on also last week. Oh, where were you? Yeah, well, we need content from Andrew, don't we? <laughs> I was in Perth enjoying it, Graham. Oh, yes, good. and I caught up with him during the week, but it was a fantastic meeting. You're right, Ronnie, at uh, Mooney Valley yesterday. And I suppose, in a smaller type way, reminiscent of Brone Crusher and our Waverley Star mm. over the concluding stages. A great battle, and we've been saying it for a while, the Cox Plate. Bring it on. Yes. No doubt about that. Uh, I should say well, we'll have some news later in the show about all the EI latest, but uh, key meetings tomorrow, Racing New South Wales Board. It's my belief that a month of schedule meetings will be announced tomorrow, spread around country New South Wales in areas that haven't been hit by EI. So we'll have more on that later, Graham. Oh, that's good news. I certainly hope that comes off, uh, particularly for country racing who are doing it extremely tough. Now, if you'd like to send an email, it apparently will be read out today. Is that, is that right? If they're of the standard <laughs> oh. that I see befitting, <laughs> uh, really. www.skychannel.com.au. Click on the feedback icon there. Zero two nine four five two double two double two and mail at at the producer at Racing Retro, Sky Channel, seventy nine French's Forest Road, French's Forest two zero eight six. As usual, you will vet them. Oh, well, you have to. Hmm. Some are critical yeah. of me. Exactly. <laughs> you know, those, those ones. <laughs> They're not getting on the show. Obviously, plenty last week. Now, uh, uh, let's, yeah, let's a lot of, get... A lot of trees die for those, you know. <laughs> 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 
Right, let's move on to the action. Let's see this uh, Bonnie Mare Gold Edition. This is Group 1 Racing, the Manicado Stakes. 1,200 metres and away they go. The gates towards the centre. Landed out in front, going quickly up on the inside of it now. It's Hoos and Lightning here, the Angels just off those when they settle down. Gold Edition led. Uh, Universal Queen coming over quickly from Hoos and Lightning on the fence here, the Angels. Mono Rules is trapped deep, a length further back than our Maharaja. Stands out, followed by Undue. Mind your head, getting back. Then Dr Nip and Tuck, wonderful work. World and for Mr. Last of All coming up the side, Gold Edition leads from on the outside, Universal Queen Monet rules and mind your head is off the track a length further back here, the Angels got up on the inside of Huss and Lightning, Vaughan Mr. Deep around our Maharaja, followed by Anju locked away, Dr. Nip and Tuck stands out into the wonderful world Gold Edition up to the turn, a half in front of Universal Queen, Monet rules a length further back here, the Angels, fourth in the turn trying to get a run through, then mind your head and Vaughan Mr. Gold Edition a length and a half in front, here the Angels coming to the Rail. Going after it, then Monet Reels, Universal Queen. Gold Edition in front. Kicks a length in front of Monet Reels. Vormister out wide is running on well, but still Gold Edition in front. Universal Queen, Vormister trying hard. The mighty little grey mare, Gold Edition. Gold Edition, a half length to Vormister. A photo third, undue or out wide. Ronnie Mourned, eh? Starthy Catsetis, Gold Edition first, Vormister. And Dr. Nip and Tuck, he's held a nice run by second and third there. Yes, yeah, certainly, but take nothing away from no. the Bonnie Mare. Uh, she broke their hearts, didn't she? She certainly did. Look, it's 1,200 metres. She's got that 1,200 metre speed to, mm. to be a control freak, which we know that she is. At 1,000 metres, she's vulnerable to something leading her. Exactly. And that's when she doesn't mm. like it so much. But at 1,200 metres, she gets to the front and she gets an easy sectional somewhere in the middle, which she, I think she did. Uh, I tell you what, it's impossible to beat then. Yeah, she obviously thrives in Melbourne as well. She'll probably, you know, the Flemington Carnival, we know she goes well down the straight and we know she's going well. She's just an iron mare and, and she's hard to beat in anything she can test. How good is this Adelaide mare down the outside here, Vaughan Mister? Only having her seventh start in a race. She drew 11, she covered ground, she did a bit of work and she finished only, off. Only a length better than Dr Nip and Tuck who you bagged last week. No, no, I like Dr Nip and Tuck. Oh, oh, Ronnie, no. God's listening. No, look, I had something on him last week at big odds and he'll be much better if he finds a wet track Dr. Nick, Dr. Nip and Tuck as well so mm. no he's run it's two good runs mm. from him no I didn't bag him no, you haven't changed mm. you two oh, right. maybe I was bagging the depth of the form oh is that what it was mm. well we're certainly not bagging Luke Nolan are we no way because he is just on fire as uh, Luke Nolan and he is our special guest and he's here to talk uh, particularly about El Segundo and a race coming up but uh, first of all Luke good morning and welcome to you Morning, Graham. How are you? I'm fantastic. You rode Wonderful World in that uh, race in the Manicato. Um, what are your thoughts? I thought he ran well. Uh, he's looking for a seven, but uh, no, he ran well yesterday, and uh, I think they'll be going to back him up on Saturday in uh, Rupert Clark, and he'll he'll be in it up to his ears, back to handicap conditions. Yeah. Look, do you think it was perhaps a, a tactic to give him that run over the shorter course, a second run over the 1200, just to make sure that he's steady going into the spring? I think so, he probably just, but was really keen to give him a, a good grounding for uh, races later in the spring. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. And he's going really well. Ronnie, you're right. I suppose it's disappointing with horses like Vore Mister and Dr. To nip and tuck. They've got to get back in their races and they've got to circle the field otherwise they're just throwing caution to the wind. But they are very good horses. I think they're going to be perfectly suited down the straight. Perhaps the Salinger could be a nice race for it but 11 from 17 over the 1200 she does get her chance to dictate gold edition. Absolute freak mare. How do we rate this as a Group 1 race? I mean, I mean you're going to win well, all, na the winner naturally. But all Group 1 races in Victoria this year will have a question mark over them as far as mm. form goes because mm. they're restricted to Victorian horses and some from South Australia. But, you know, it, it, she's capable of winning a Group 1 whether there were Sydney and Queensland horses oh, not her. No, there not her. anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I Run guess it. just take it on that on face value. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, we're doubting the depth of the, the McEwen for a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's a Group 3. That was looked a weak race on paper. But, yeah. um, look, uh, she's a Group 1 man. We all know that. And uh, she, she simply was too good for them. They seem to slow mid-stages there, Alf. Um, when Stanley yeah, got their back, it's... He sort yeah, of well, over and him. actually, I, I made him a horse to follow. Look, he's probably just a little better suited, I think, also with just a gentler tempo where he doesn't have to be sort of any pressure being applied on him in the early stages to try and maintain a position. Look, he'll go to the 1400, I've got no doubt, and be very, very hard to beat. But when the speed does come off, and I suppose one thing that surprised me a little bit, Ronnie, was 
how hard he staff he had to work on gold edition to maintain the lead. Yeah, and, and what about Undue? Do you think he'll be better suited on a, on a bigger track? Oh, there's no question about that. He was always going to be suspect, in my view, from, you know, the inside gate. But, uh, no, nah, perfect run, going OK. All right, the... Uh Group 2, Dado Tan Chin Nam Stakes, or the Fian Stakes as we used to know it, 1,600 metres, and Luke is aboard El Segundo. How's about this for a finish? Two and a half in front. Chenkwe Chento is second, three, Tikpan Woody running third. Fellstart fourth, two, then Arata Sun fifth. Right behind him on his tail is El Segundo. Then efficient, further back may be better. They've got a lot of ground to make up these horses. 600 to go, activation, full ball by three. Chenkwe Chento is sitting on his back. Four lengths further back, Tikpan Woody. Here's Arata Sun and El Segundo, they're winding up together. Out in the centre of the track now from Falstaff. But Cinque Cheno's gone up to activation on the turn. Five lengths further back, Tikpan Woody. El Segundo on the outside of Arata Sun. They've got a lot of ground to make up as Cinque Cheno hit the front. Race two lengths in front, but El Segundo, Arata Sun are coming with their runs now. El Segundo, Arata Sun. They're going to get to Cinque Cheno. El Segundo and Arata Sun. Stride for stride, Arata Sun. El Segundo, they hit it. All oh, dead heat. Couldn't separate them, El Segundo, Arata Sun. Wow, what a finish. El Segundo, trained by Colin Little. Arata Sun second, Cinque Cento third. A few anxious moments there, Luke. Uh, there was a couple, Graham, but um, when you're on quality gallopers, they, uh, they're winners. So uh, <coughs> He won pretty good in the end and just probably peaked on his run a little bit late too, so there's still improvement there. Was it always your idea to follow Arata Sun or did you think you'd be able to get close enough to him, not knowing how the race was going to be run? Uh, I was, oh, I thought I'd end up in his spot. He just yep. shaved me a bit after the start and uh, I was happy to follow him because he's going to give me a card into the race. Sure. Did you put the shoulder into a Harada son there halfway down the straight? <laughs> No, there's only a small shoulder in there. A small shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, this I reckon this will be a pretty good guide to the Cox Plate actually, because they ran it like it was it was a hard run race, and it, and it's probably similar to a more like a 2,000 metre race than a mile race, and mm. and I reckon that those two horses have, have levelled themselves out as, as proper contenders for. Uh, the Cox Plate. I know that that race is being compared to the Bone Crusher Our Waverley Star Race. And I reckon that's a fair comparison because I rate yeah. that Cox Plate a Group Two. Mm. I reckon well, that's the most sort of overrated Cox Plate mm. the world's ever seen. That <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I reckon I these horses are as good as them. I, I think what we like about it, Richard, it's a genuine ding dong fight to the line. And you know, like a lot of people are talking this morning that uh, a Harada Sun actually got a lot of, you know respect out of the performance because he didn't shirk the issue at all when Luke come up alongside of him, made him go with him and uh, he really stuck it out really well and uh, Darren got the best out of him. El Segundo can probably improve fitness wise and Harada son being the stallion that he is can probably continue to improve with genuine racing but I tell you what, what about next week you've got Miss Finland lining up again Oh, it's going to be absolutely awesome, the Cox Plate. Luke, do you stay on him now? Obviously, you'll stay on him for the, what, the Turnbull next and maybe straight into uh, the Cox Plate. Uh, hopefully, um, Ronnie, um, I'm not sure yet. Uh, they've only booked me ride by ride so far, so... But you should be Is there any the discussion way. about the Turnbull? Are you riding it in that? Uh, no, not as yet, but uh, you'll be sweet hopefully there. I give him some arguments uh, to... Uh, not take me off. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting thing about this spring, I think, you know, given that they're only Victorian horses with a smattering of horses from you know, New Zealand and South Australia, that the top horses in Victoria at the moment aren't in the top two stables. Mm. If you look at it, there's Miss Finland, of course, in David's stable. And, but beyond that, Lee and David don't have a domination of the top horses. They seem to be spread out amongst the other stables and it seems to be getting, giving other jockeys, not necessarily the same jockeys, mm. an opportunity as well, which Luke has obviously taken. Considering we're only got, we're going, looks like we're only going to have Melbourne horses mm. for the Melbourne Cup this year, my, I think my first four numbers are already on the ticket. Efficient? Efficient. Yes. Maybe, Maybe better. Mm -hmm. uh, the horse of Danny O'Brien's master O'Reilly O'Reilly and, and Sermione. Sermione. No, you told me before, but I, I've, I've got two of yours. Oh, I've locked in. That's it. I've There's locked in two else. of yours. I've got um, two of them. I'm not. Well, what? I find a bit dodgy. What? Oh, well, you put know. your head in the chopping block, come on. It's Sermione oh. and Master O'Reilly. Got, got to do more from before I put okay. him in. All right. He's done that before. Mm. Right now, here's Luke. Get chopped off. <laughs>
<laughs> not often. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> He's lurking his best uh, in uh, the first race of the day. A horse by the name of Pillar of Hercules. Then came on the inside, Merjana. They're followed by Parrish is out three deep. Back in the middle, their extension of time. A length crown ruler from White Phosphorus and two to Davcon. Up the side of the 6.50 metre mark down. Underboy from Catlin Bay. Pillar of Hercules comes out three deep. And Gundius four white. Crown ruler right off the track with Parrish. And there's about five or six of them across the track. Extension of time getting up behind them with Grand Sasso. Merjana last as they bunch. Catlin Bay down under boy. Pillar of Hercules three up. Then starting to struggle a little Goondy. Crown ruler off the track from Davcon. Grand Sasso about to get out when they turn for home. Pillar of Hercules hit the front on the turn. On the outside, Grand Sasso. Catlin Bay back to the fence. Then Crown Ruler down the outside from extension of time. Pillar of Hercules at the 100 metre mark. A length in front of Grand Sasso. Pillar of Hercules in front of Grand Sasso. Crown Ruler and Pillar of Hercules comes home to win the first. Just over a length, Grand Sasso and nose third Crown Ruler. Fourth extension. It's of by Rocco Gibraltar out of coat, Pillar of Hercules. Peter Moody and of course Luke Nolan aboard. And Luke, it looks to be going places, that galloper. I think so, Graham. Uh, he's, he's still pretty raw. Mm. Uh, doesn't know a great deal about it, but uh, uh, I, was, I was impressed with his run yesterday. I think he's really taken the next step. Yeah, well, he's only had the two runs, that being his third. There's obviously significant improvement to that, and I suppose you're able to sort of, you know, use him tactically yesterday. Yeah. Uh, actually, <clears throat> he travelled a lot better in the McNeil uh, the start prior. Yep. Uh, it was good to see him switch right off, and when I sparked him up, he, he come right on. And I suppose one thing about it, when you actually came off from one off to up outside the leader, there was a charge from behind that went forward. He didn't really try to get carried away with it. He, he was His composure was good too. Yeah, I, was, I, liked, I tried to get him through his gears, and yeah. it can be a bit of a daunting task for a horse, especially a new one, getting around Mooney Valley, so I helped him along. and. Uh, I, I, was, I was happy with the effort. I think he's a horse going past. Is he suited by perhaps the Guineas or going on to a derby? Well, well time will tell, but I think uh, a derby suit him more than a Guineas. I think they may be a bit brilliant by the time the Guineas rolls around right. for him. It just goes to show, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that his dam, Coat, that was in the stable when I was working there, and uh, well-bred thing, I can't tell you how it got its name, but nevertheless, mm -hmm. it was a horrible horse. <laughs> was it? it was, yes, it was a horrible horse, but it's been a very good brood man. Yeah, you know, there it goes to show. No, I don't know what to think of these three-year-olds. Um, this Caulfield Guineas is there for whatever peaks on the right day to my eye. I, I, I can't line these three-year-olds up at all. The, the third horse there, Crown Ruler, the horse I had my money on, went enormous. He went yeah. enormous. But, uh, I was on it too. And uh, I think that'll take plenty out of him. He had a gut-busting run. Yeah, there. it would have slipped well last night. Mm. And I, I think that was the case with a few of those horses too, Ron. They did have gut-busters, a few of them taking off just a little prematurely. Yeah. Race 8 was a Group 2 race for Mares in Devil Moon from the Mark Cavanagh stable. It is wide throughout, but look at it uh, keep fighting in the straight and win. It's third, fourth, Jacqueline Rouge. Devil Moon is fifth, but out three deep. A length and a half, Bromfalinity. Over on the inside, then further back in the field came Maslin's Beach, the middle. Danavay deep, a length further back, Evil Webb around it. Zilzy from Bellini Rose, Oxygenata and Can Canal. The leader is Empire Dancer coming up at the 500. Hidden Strings has gone up to it on the outside. A length, Jacqueline Rouge. Devil Moon still continuing on. She's been wide, but she's going up with Hidden Strings. And they hit the front now from Zilzy getting out, then Bromfalinity. Maslin's Beach has held up for a run, Dan Evade, Can Canella pull deep, Devil Moon up on the outside of Hidden Strings, they come away, two and a half in front of Zilzy, Bromfalinity now running on and then came Can Canal. Devil Moon in front with about a hundred metres to go, ducking down to the fence in front of Bromfalinity and Hidden Strings and it's Devil Moon, a big win, Devil Moon a length and a half, Bromfalinity third, Hidden Strings, Can Canal grab fourth. From Zilzy. She's pretty smart as you can see, Devil Moon, uh, trained by Mark Cavanagh with Michael Rod aboard after being very wide throughout. She's obviously one that's just slipped the system. You know, look, uh, when you go back through a form, she's won seven from 15. And, you know, she put a string of wins together in Adelaide and was only beaten in the Oaks behind Animato. And, uh, you know, she's just too good. Michael Robb was giving her a pat there.